greeting as he left. How many of you know that's exactly what God's asking us to do? Three people. I'm, I'm encouraged. <laughs> How many of you know that the Bible does not tell us to treat other people the way they treat us, but to treat them the way that we would like to be treated? Okay, it's up here, but has it made its way down here? Has that do unto others as you would have them do unto you, has that worked into your character? Or are we still emotionally driven and when somebody's nasty to us and we're just nasty to them? Yeah. Oh, bless God, I'm gonna have to put up with that. If you think I'm gonna put up that, you're not gonna talk to me that way. You're not gonna treat me that way. Then go back for another date with Jesus next Sunday. <laughs> Woo. Give me a little hug. I love you with the love of the Lord. <laughs> so his friend turned to him and he said, man, he's a sour fellow, isn't he? And he said, oh, he's that way every night. Well, then why do you continue to be so kind to him? Harris asked. Well, why not, his friend responded. Why should I let him decide how I'm going to act? If I said to you tonight, how many of you want the power of God in your life? <coughs> Well, what do you think that power is? It's the power to be nice to people who aren't being nice to you. It's the power to keep yourself calm in adversity. <laughs> it's the power to control yourself. Well, Mabel, I don't know if we ought to come back here tomorrow or not. She's a little feisty. <laughs> Here's one more. Attitude is a choice. Are you living by choice or by feeling? Sila, pause and calmly think about that. Just, just think about it. Are you living by choice, by decision, by turning your will over to God? Father, your will be done, not mine. I give you my will. I don't want to do this, but I'm willing to do it if that's what you will. God gives us a free will because if we're going to do anything right, we have to will to do it. <laughs> now, we don't do it by ourselves, just by willpower alone. Apart from him, we can do nothing. Understand that. Please do not go out of here and say, bless God, I'm just going to change. No, you won't. No, you won't. But what you can say is, God, with all of my heart, I want to start doing what you tell me to do. Please, God, please help me. Tie me to the altar and don't let me go until I become obedient. I don't care what you have to do in my life. Don't leave me this way. Please don't leave me this way. Tell God 25 times every day, apart from you, I can do nothing. God, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. I mean, I thought at one point in my life that I was getting mentally ill. I, I felt like I spent two years just going around, help me, God, help me, God. Okay. Help me, help me, help me. One day I'm thinking, what do I need help for? And I thought, oh, help me, help me, help me, God. Help me, help me, help me. I mean, the, the more you read, this is like a mirror. <laughs> the more you look in here, the more you see the dirt on your face. You know, you can have dirt all over your face, but if you don't ever look in a mirror, you can go around all day and not, not even know it. So we have mirrors to see, am I okay here? Well, this is the mirror. This, this shows us what our soul is to be like, what our life is to be like. And nobody has to be condemned if you don't come up to it right now. But man, we got to get headed in the right direction. God's depending on us.
He's depending on us. Robert Louis Stevenson was bedridden much of his life with tuberculosis. I didn't know that. One day his wife heard him hacking loudly and said, I suppose you still believe it's a wonderful day. Turning toward a window ablaze with sunlight, Stevenson responded, I do. Yes, I do. I will never let a row of medicine bottles block my horizon. Circumstances are uncontrollable. Life events happen. Our responsibility is to choose our responses, which is our attitude. Situations may color your view of life, but you have been given the power to choose what color that horizon will be. Amen. Nobody here, no matter what has happened to you in your life, nobody here has to have a bad attitude if you don't want to. Nobody here has to have a bad attitude if you don't. Nobody here has to feel sorry for yourself if you don't want to. Well, that's easy for you to say. You just don't know what I've been through. Well, maybe you better go get a copy of my testimony called One Life. Before you start telling me that I don't know how you feel, maybe you better listen to that first. Amen. And I'm telling you all the same things that God told me that got me from being sick to being well. And I'll continue to tell you as long as I've got a breath in me. God has got an amazing plan for your life. Oh my goodness. Peace and joy and righteousness and power and anointing and victory and to be used by God to help change other people's lives is the greatest thing in the world, and God's got all that for you. Deuteronomy 6, 23 and 24. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in. I love that. He brought us out to bring us in. He brought you out of what you were in to bring you into something better. He brought us out from there that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore to our fathers. Verse 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to reverently fear the Lord our God for our good always. Why did he give us those commandments? For their good. Everybody say it's for my good. For my good. Deuteronomy 10, 12 and 13. We say to our kids, I'm just telling you this for your good. Why won't you listen to me? I'm just telling you this for your own good. Is there one parent here that has never said that to your child? <laughs> not one. There is not one parent in here who has never said that to your child. Well, why should our kids listen to us if we're not going to listen to God? And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but that you reverently fear the Lord your God? Walk in all of his ways. Love him. Serve the Lord your God with all your mind and heart and with your entire being to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for whose good? For your good. Everybody say it's for my own good. <laughs> okay, now look. Just to make sure that I put people at ease here. Because I don't want you to go out condemned and feel like, oh, Lord Jesus, I'll never make it. I've got 500 things wrong in my life. <laughs> Might as well just backslide right now. There's no hope for me. <laughs> okay, let's, let's see 1 John 2, 2. Uh, let's see the first verse. Let me see verse 1. My little children, I write you these things so that you may not violate God's law and sin. Okay, now look here just a minute. I'm telling you all of this tonight so that you won't sin. But if anybody should sin, <laughs> just in case you don't get it till tomorrow. <laughs> we have an advocate. <laughs> Hallelujah! 
In John chapter 14, verse 15, it's recorded that Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Well, you know, I think that we can look at that as a promise rather than something that makes us feel threatened. The more I fall in love with Jesus, the more I realize how good he is and everything that he's done for me, the more I'm going to want to obey him. And, you know, I believe that it's so much better when we do something out of a want to than a have to. I mean, you can do something because you feel that you have to, but I know even like with my relationship with my children, I want them to do things for me because they want to, not because they feel obligated or because they have to. So you might even think about it like this. When you're struggling with disobedience in an area, instead of just trying harder, why not look more to Jesus, fall more deeply in love with him, receive his love for you, and you'll find obedience becoming the natural fruit of that love that you have for God. You know, God's got a good life for all of us, and obedience is really the pathway to get there. God's written word is a good place to start, so study the word, study the word, study the word, learn to step out and obey the Holy Spirit's promptings. We have a wonderful offer for you today, four hours of teaching on four CDs called Obedience, and it's about following the narrow path to the greatest life. I love that. You know, there's a narrow path and a broad path, and we get to choose which one that we want to be on. Sometimes that broad path is more comfortable for our flesh, but the narrow path is the one that's going to produce the greatest life that Jesus died for us to have. And we're giving this to you today for your gift to the ministry of any amount. How does that help us? Well, first of all, it not only helps us, but it helps you. You get the word, and then it helps us with things like paying television bills for airtime, reaching out to hurting people around the globe. We have orphanages and water wells and, and feeding programs and all kinds of things that you can be part of by sharing with us in a generous way. So I like to think about you can give to us, we can give to you. We both get to be blessed. You get the word of God. We get to help more people. And it just puts a smile on everybody's face. So do your very best, send in the best gift that you can. Request these teachings. And I believe that it's going to help you get started on the greatest path that God has for you. Become the bold, confident, courageous woman God intended you to be at the 2014 <laughs> Love Life Women's Conference as you worship with Israel Houghton, Fused Worship, and C.C. Winans, and hear messages from Ed Young, Lisa Bevere, and Joyce Meyer. The 2014 Love Life Women's Conference in St. Louis, Missouri, September 25th through the 27th. Register today. No matter who you are, what you did, or what's happened before, God has your comeback already planned, and it's going to be glorious. We've all had times in our lives when things just don't seem to go as we had planned. I want you to know that it's never too late for your fresh start. You can begin again, and I want to show you how. You can begin again. Available now from Joyce Meyer Ministries. You mean more to us at Joyce Meyer Ministries than you may ever know. We appreciate you, and we thank our friends and partners for making this worldwide ministry possible. Together, we're feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, and presenting the gospel to the nations. Please contact us or visit JoyceMeyer.org today to share your prayer requests, find out more about our resources, see Joyce's conference schedule, and to join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.